So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and Apple released iPadOS 15 Beta 2 yesterday and they released it pretty late in the day so I wanted to play with it, figure out exactly what's going on, go through all the release notes because I'm going to put them right here and it's an everlasting release note kind of schedule and basically what Apple does is they let you know what bugs they fixed, what's been resolved and then what bugs are still persisting, right? And as of right now we have 70 resolved issues and I believe a little bit over 50 unresolved issues. So again, at the end of the video, I'm going to let you guys know if I recommend iPadOS 15 to the public, if you guys should get on the beta program. But again, with that many issues, it's going to be hard to recommend that. But we did get some new features, some new updates along with those bug fixes. Let's get into it and figure out exactly what's new. So let's hop right into this review, everybody. So if we hop into the settings section right here, and let me know if you like this view better than the actual real world top down view because that's normally how I do these beta reviews. But I wanted to do it in this fashion because you guys seem to really like it on the Microsoft series. So if we go into the about section, we're gonna check out exactly what firmware we're on. So software version 15.0, and we're on 19A5281H. I think last time we were on W, so Apple seemed to have skipped a lot of letters there in order to kind of get it down. And what that means is that Apple's just fixing everything. We're getting closer to that A version and then that RC version which ideally will be the final version that's released to the public in September. And then I didn't take a screenshot of the actual size of the update, but you're looking at around 1.5 to 2 gigabytes for the actual installment of iPadOS 15 Beta 2. So give yourself around 3 to 4 gigs of space in order to get it installed, just to make sure you have enough space in there to get it going. So the first two features that I'm going to show you are trackpad and keyboard specific. So, so these are features that are only going to work on iPadOS 15 if you have a magic keyboard or a, tr a magic trackpad or just basically any trackpad or mouse installed and connected to your iPad Pro. So the first thing I'm going to show you is we're going to go inside of Safari. And you can see that I have the mouse cursor right here with the trackpad. We go into Safari and then remember in the first one where I said you can't actually, the refresh button is no longer on the URL bar or anything like that because Apple moved it to over here. So what Apple did to kind of fix that issue and alleviate that issue is just pull down to refresh, which is cool and everything, but I actually missed the refresh button. So now if you have a cursor and you hover into the URL bar, the refresh button just pops up. You just hit refresh and you're good to go. And you can see that if I'm not on the actual URL bar, it's not there. So that's a nice little implementation to bring it back from a visual and function standpoint, but also take it away when Apple seems or Apple thinks it's not really necessary. But again, it's only available if you have a cursor support, trackpad, mouse connected to your iPad. If you're disconnected, so right now I have it hovering, and if I disconnect my iPad, you can see that it goes away. Another addition to keyboard functionality and trackpad functionality on the iPad and iPad OS is if you go into your messages, right? If you go into your messages and you click on one, you now have a highlighted, you know, version of the image that you're clicking on or the text or chat group that you're in, right? So if you click on one of them, it highlights it in blue, highlights them in blue, which is awesome. And I think the reason they're doing that is so you can use the directional keys on the keyboard. So now I'm using the down and up keys. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think this was possible on any other iPadOS software. So now you can navigate through iMessage with just your trackpad and your directional keys, all good to go. So those are the two main things that I noticed from a trackpad magic keyboard perspective. So all the other ones that I'm gonna mention you don't need the trackpad. These are all included in iPadOS 15 beta 2. So if you don't have a trackpad, these you'll actually be able to see and actually play with these new features. So the first thing that I do want to show you is if you go into settings, if we go into notifications, and then you click on scheduled summary. So these scheduled summaries is something that came to iPadOS 15 and iOS 15 to give you basically prompts in the beginning at the end of the day of all the important notifications that you might have missed during the day. But what I like to see now is if you go into apps in summary, this is a new screen. Now before we can only toggle these off and on, but now you get the ability to see how many notifications on average you get per week or per day, I think it is. And then you can also organize them from A to Z. So as you can see, I have my spike mail on, I have Gmail on, and that's pretty much the only two that I have on to give me daily recaps for it. So I like this new screen with the ability to actually see how many notifications you get on a daily basis. The next update is actually inside of shortcuts. So if we go into shortcuts, there's a new setting inside of shortcuts. So if you go into and create something new and then click on the little menu bar over here, there's now an ability to see receive what's on screen. And I don't really know exactly what that means. I think what that means is that with the shortcut, now it could, it'll like take an image and pretty much read whatever, whatever's on the screen from a live text and maybe a QR code perspective and things like that. Cause that's what that looks like. Even though that's a camera right there, that also looks like a QR code kind of scanner, right? So I think that's what that shortcut thing is, but we'll play around with it, see exactly what it is. And I just want to let you guys know that that's something new that it's appeared in shortcuts. 
Another big one that Apple kind of brought to everybody finally was, so with the new Quick Note feature in iPadOS Beta 1, the only way to activate the Quick Note feature was with your Apple Pencil, right? You have to grab your Apple Pencil only on the bottom right of the iPad screen, pull it up, and then you have your Quick Note, right? So I'm gonna press done on that because I don't really wanna pull it up. But now, I guess Apple realized that not every single iPad Pro owner or every single iPad OS 15 owner is gonna have an Apple Pencil. So now you can use your finger to do the same thing and pull up the Quick Note. So I'm using my finger to do it. I'm zooming it in, pinching to zoom, pinching to make it smaller, pressing done. And now with your finger, you can pull up the Quick Note just like this. And then I did actually try it with your finger to see if you can screenshot as well. So if you flick up with your finger, it, you can't screenshot. So the only functionality that came with your finger was with the Quick Note feature on the bottom right of the iPad Pro screen. Another thing that I quickly wanted to show you is that we got a new Maps icon. So if you go into the Maps, you can see that this new Map icon is a little bit different. You can see that the little navigation triangle is bigger, the circle's bigger. So something to, to point out to you guys. And then with iPadOS 15 and iOS 15, we got a new thing called focus modes. So if we go into focus, into settings, so basically what focus modes are is, I think it's just another way of creating custom profiles, honestly. So basically you can set a profile for work, a profile for personal, a profile for when you're maybe at, at a game or something. So what they added with this beta two update is the ability to set up personal screen. So if we click on one of them, like the do not disturb one, you can see that there's a new customization feature inside of these. So inside of the home screen, you can now decide which pages are viewed and allowed to be viewed while you're on this mode or this focus mode. So here you can see that only my like work ones are able to be seen. And then also on the lock screen, you have a new feature to dim the lock screen and then show the silence notifications on the lock screen as well. So those are new features to focus if you guys wanna take advantage of those. I also noticed that there's a new splash screen for notes when you open it up for the first time on beta two. So basically it lets you create quick notes from anywhere. So with the finger or Apple pencil to start a note. So I told you guys, uh, organize with tags, share mentions, and then you have an activity view. So it's basically Apple notes trying to do their best to compete with the, the Google docs of the world and any shareable, actionable project that you're doing with anybody else, any collaboration that you're doing. So that's what Apple's doing with Apple notes. And so far, I'm actually a big user of Apple Notes and it's been getting better and better. The whole thing is, is how many people are gonna adopt Apple Notes to the point where you're gonna use it on a professional basis. The next thing that I wanna show you is SharePlay. So Apple did release SharePlay with Beta 1, but it wasn't really working and they fixed it up in Beta 2. So if you go into FaceTime and go down to SharePlay, you have the ability to toggle it on. So SharePlay is this feature that allows you to view content, listen to content in real time at the same time with anybody else that you're having a FaceTime conversation with. So if you wanna watch a movie on Apple TV, you can do that. If you wanna to listen to something on Apple Music together at the same time and pause and play at the same time, you can do that. So that is what SharePlay is and you can toggle it off and on right here in the settings menu through FaceTime. Another cool one that I wanna talk about is spatial audio. So spatial audio is something that I noticed got really, really good with iPad OS 15 and iOS 15. I don't know if it was the fact that I got a new M1 iPad Pro versus my 2018 iPad Pro, but spatial audio is wonderful. So what I wanna show you is if you go into accessibility, and then first off, you can see that this new AirPods like icon is different. Now we're seeing AirPods Maxes, even though I have AirPods Pro, so that icon is new. If you click on the AirPods, you now have the ability to follow iPad in spatial audio. So you can turn that off and on whenever you want down here with this toggle, but I highly recommend trying it at least through Spotify. Listen to like a podcast with it or some um, intense movie like 1917 because I was listening to Joe Rogan the other day and it feels like I'm in the room with him when doing spatial audio. It's, it's very trippy, but I highly recommend you guys try it out. And then one of the final ones that I did see was if you go into your emojis, right? And you click on the three dots, you click edit, you now have the ability to add clothing to your emoji. So I don't know how many people are into that, but it is an option. You get to change all the colorways, you know, make them red, go a little blue. You can pretty much choose whatever you want. And I like the customization, just another little feature that Apple added, which I think will be popular to, to a certain demographic. For me, I don't really use emojis, but I wanted to show you guys that they're there and they're active. And then the last thing I do want to touch on is actual battery performance. So again, you guys know that we have finally a low power mode with iPadOS beta one that we got last time. So you guys can see that we're averaging around six hours and five minutes of screen on time. If you go to the last 10 days, four hours and 37 minutes of screen on time. And the best way to really look at it is a day that we touched 100%, which is right here. We have five hours and 38 minutes of screen off time or screen on time in an hour 20 of screen off. A day like this, seven hours and eight minutes, but we did go to about 125% of battery, which means I was charging throughout the day to make sure I got that seven hours and eight minutes. And you can see NBA 2K, YouTube, LumaFusion are the biggest proponents of sucking at my battery. But let's see if it gets a little bit better. I'm trying to get to that 10 hour point, but I don't think I'm gonna get there if I'm using 
LumaFusion, if I'm playing video games and things like that, that's more for less tense, less intensive tasks, it might get you that 10 to 11 hour price or that 10 to 11 hour time frame. But that's gonna do it for this view. Let's get out of this view and go to the normal view, everybody. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned something new. These early betas, especially for main software, so iPadOS 15 beta one, two, three, these are gonna be the most fun to kind of play with because we're gonna see the most tangible and physical changes with the software, right? So like I said, these are the most fun to play with because they're new, they're exciting, and we actually get something to share with everybody besides bug fixes and software updates, right? But Apple is making their strides. They're getting iPadOS 15 and iOS 15 ready for the public, which will most likely get it in middle and late September when the new iPhones release in that time frame. So for now, Apple just has a few months in this entire summer to tidy everything up, make it special, and make it ready to go for everybody to use. But hopefully you enjoyed. Comment below if any of these features kind of made you think or turned on a light bulb or were like, wow, finally, they finally fixed that. Because so far, yes, the features are nice, but there was nothing kind of transformative about them, right? But that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you guys made it to the end, you guys are legends. Thank you so much. The channel keeps growing. Hopefully 30K might come around a lot sooner than we expected. But until next time, peace.